purpose of this Easter Sunday morning, and that's to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is without doubt the single most important event in all of history. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, the Son of Almighty God, who in human flesh died on a cross for our sin, all of us. This is the most fundamental truth of the Bible. Everything else in the Bible depends on his resurrection. I'm reading from Acts chapter 34. Simon had gone down to the house of the Gentiles, house of Cornelius, and he opened his mouth and he said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he's Lord of all. That day I say, you know, which was published throughout all of Judea, began with Galilee, and after the baptism which John preached, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And now picking up in verse 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him open not to all the people, but the witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead and to give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of his sin. There are two things I want us to consider this morning, just two things. What we need to know and what we need to do. What we need to know and what we need to do. There are three things we need to know. Number one, the one John and Don, here it is, here it is. Jesus died for each and every one of us who are in this building today. The law is specific, the soul that sins shall die. No ifs, buts, maybes. And because we were sinners, we were condemned to die. And Jesus, knowing this, went to the cross. Nobody forced him there. He went voluntarily. He took our sins upon him, and he prayed, paid the price through his death. It's on the cross that Jesus took every sin that we would ever commit upon himself. He who was absolutely sinless took upon himself the punishment that I deserve. God being a just God, a righteous God, a holy God, had no choice, but he had to punish us for the sins we committed. But he loved us so much. He sent his only begotten son. Instead of punishing us, he punished us. One of my favorite songs, I ain't going to sing after Katie. I should have been crucified. It was me. I should have been crucified. But Jesus took my place. Here's the second thing we need to know. Jesus, the Christ, rose for us. And I was trying to share with the children, Easter is not about the Easter bunny. It's about Almighty God in human flesh, literally rising from the dead. He is the game changer. Remember the ladies went down to the tomb early Sunday morning. They were going to anoint the dead body of Jesus. Worried about getting the stone rolled away. When they got there, this huge stone, which weighed tons, had already been moved. They looked in, and two men in white were sitting there. Remember what he said in Luke's gospel? 
He is not here. He has risen from the dead. Don't you remember that? It's a question I need to ask myself. Do we remember? But this Jesus who died for us also rose for us. His victory over death absolutely proved that everything that he said, everything that he did, everything that he taught is absolutely true. In John's Gospel, my favorite passage, chapter 14, he said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will return It's all true. It will happen. Because of the cross and the tomb. Here's the third thing we need to know on this Easter Sunday morning. That the Jesus who died for us, the Jesus who rose for us, this Jesus cares about you. I don't care if you're a true believer in Jesus. I don't care if you call yourself an atheist, whether you're someone who's trying to please God with your life or someone who doesn't even really care. Jesus cares for you. The one who died on the cross, God in the flesh, rose from the dead. Same God. I want you to know that there is nothing that you can possibly do or say that will change the fact that he loves you. Need proof of that? There it is, the cross. He not only loves you and cares for you, he wants to do it for all eternity. Two verses you know, everybody knows it. You learned them when you were a child. John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Those three things. We need to know on Easter Sunday morning, Jesus died for us. Jesus rose for us. And then he loves us. Now that's what we need to know and remember. And here now is what we need to do. It's imperative. You need to do it right now before this morning is over. back, he's coming back for his church. Are you part of it? Oh, we need you over at Lake Blackshore. We've got so much stuff going on. Ministries, all sorts of things happening. You, you see what's going on. We need you. We need you. And you need a church home. Everybody needs 
needs a place where they can go tag up and say, hey, that's my church. That's where I worship. That's where I serve. Would you stand with me? Would you stand where you are right now? If he's speaking to you about something you need to do, would you come?